There's a million stories, you know, there's, there's so much that's happening in this business. Some of it is nuanced, some of it is very subtle. And then there's in your face blatant things that happen and many different injustices. Now is the time to talk about these things. Now is the time to say, okay, why is this happening? How do we fix it? And how do we move forward in a positive way? It's an exciting time for artists of not just the rap genres, but across the board, we're finding people are being more expressive and more experimental and it's working. So the eyes are on us and we are delivering the music and it's working in the charts. So there's a big relationship between the output and the success, which has actually never really happened before. For example, we're seeing a lot of artists have their first number ones and, and not just one per genre but multiple artists within the genre are having commercial success. One of the most vital or key moments of Black British culture was Stormzy headlining Glastonbury. For someone who, you know, he started on Link Up TV and, and GRM and those sort of underground platforms to now headlining Glastonbury on a Friday, the youngest black male ever to do it, um, it was a really iconic moment and the message he sent. There used to be almost a sort of one in one out approach to black artists succeeding in the mainstream, for example, where it's like, well, we're not really going to sign another rapper or whatever because we got one. <laughs> so we don't need another one. Meanwhile, 20 white indie bands would be being, you know, um, uh, pushed out there as, as a big proposition. That's changed. Some of the main challenges black professionals face within the industry come down to career advancement, um, opportunity, development, and those things uh, impact individuals' career progression, impact the number of people around them that um, understand them, look like them, and are able to support that progression. It would then have an impact on uh, their ability to sign or develop the talent that they'd like to because again they're not being supported in the right way um, and just generally people being able to see others who have gone before them having had success of course there are many black professionals who've had a lot of success but you have to look harder for them so I think young professionals don't have as many examples or uh, haven't had in the past uh, of people that they can look at and see the journey that they would like to take one of the main barriers that stuck out to me because I'm a black female is the um, ongoing and almost historical barrier that black women in music have faced in terms of not being um, pushed forward as front artists in music that they've been involved in, um, black women being told that they're not marketable and black women told to effectively tone down their blackness whenever they do emerge as an emerging artist in the, music, in the UK music industry. What people 
seem to be having pushed to them in terms of um, music product from, from black artists is stereotypical stuff and plays up to harmful black stereotypes. You know, who is responsible for that? Is it the artists themselves that are making that music, that are you know, doing, creating those music videos and holding themselves out in that way? Is it the companies behind them? Is it the consumers who lap it up? And the way that those things change is by people being bold enough to um, step outside the, the trend and set their own trend and do things their own way. And that takes, you know, bold visionary artists who are like, I'm going to stand up and show a different image of blackness to the world. I can't remember what year it was. I think it was the Brits and Skeptical Perform shutdown. And, you know, they said, oh, a whole bunch. He even put it in the song and he was like a whole bunch of black youths dancing aggressively on stage. And I was thinking, it's crazy how that is being taken and twisted into such a way where it's something it's not because I mean, I don't know. However, I do think if it was a group of white people dancing on stage, it would be seen as a party. But OK, yes, they're wearing tracksuits. It's normal things. So many people wear tracksuits. Dancing aggressively. I don't even know if you can call that dancing. You know, they're vibing to music. That's all it was. That I really was like, I don't even know how that can be portrayed as something so almost like vicious when it's not at all. That was, that for me, I really thought, yeah, you're being unfairly judged here. When Dave released uh, that song, Black, which I think is the masterpiece, basically, um, and indeed when he performed it at the Brits, which was a, an iconic performance, um, I was uh, captivated, thought it was an amazing thing, and he was saying lots of really um, bold stuff that needs to be heard and delivering like, quite important messages. But a lot of people who look at things in a very different way, didn't like that. <laughs> you know, they were frustrated by it. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing, that, uh, but I think you have to commend people like him for, for doing that you know, and choosing to speak out in, in, in moments like that and to show that broader view of what blackness is uh, and to give people um, something that's different to those, those harmful stereotypes. And the more that that happens, the more diversity you really get and the more the more open it is for people to be themselves whatever that may be and, and and these kind of pigeonholed categories of what you should expect from a black artist will hopefully be you know uh, worn away a bit when i first started on this mission to teach people about royalties i was just walking into local youth clubs and you had teachers who were you know, teaching kids how to produce that knew nothing about this either. So there is a major knowledge gap and I do think the organisations need to do better because we are not making enough, the, the creators aren't making enough, even the executives, myself, you know, because I work with them and if I get a percent of them. So if they're not making enough, then I'm not making enough. And it is a knowledge gap and it is for them. I think they have a duty, especially the major labels. I speak to a lot of the A&R and I'm good friends with quite a few of them. And I say every time you have a sign in, there's certain things you need to tell them. Like you need to tell them about what they're entitled to outside of what they're going to make from you guys because you profit so heavily off these artists you just have a duty to at least give them the basics understanding of what they're entitled to like like they're publishing that's a great example so i think that there is that responsibility because ultimately artists um you know it's, it's almost trite to say artists make these corporations a lot a lot a lot of cheddar somewhere along the line it has to be that, that, that these artists are taken care of and that's one way that that can happen. When you get into the industry there is no real channel for someone to say look you're going to have to learn this, this is what you should know. You're almost sucked in by the industry, used as a commodity and then that's it, your product is taken, it's commercialised but you're not given the educational grounding about as I've said, things such as contractual issues and stuff like that. Um, and so that really does lead to poor outcomes for people because they just don't know what's going on behind their back. If we had other professionals in, like black professionals, in positions of power, there'd be like a, a, a massive shift because we are the culture. If you go online, if you go on Twitter, if you go on YouTube, the conversation's always around black entertainment, black black music, and I feel like if we had more people that that 
Well, the people that are already in positions of power, if they thought more about how can we help the younger generation, how can we help the, the next people coming up, I think like things will move along so much quicker. That's why like us, for example, we're always doing stuff like mentoring, people that want to shadow us for a couple of days if they want to go to a music video shoot, if they're trying to start up a business, like a management company, just like an ecosystem so like the next person can come up. Within the scene, we need to support one another more. And I get it's so competitive. And you know, there's, there's how many of us doing the same thing, but what we really need to do is we need to work together because we all have that um, end goal, which is the same. So we need to help one another get there as opposed to individually get there. Artists, all artists need freedom to be, uh, to develop, to be um, able to make mistakes and to make the best music possible. Um, and then for that music to be uh, amplified in, you know, with equal measure as their contemporaries. So my wish for all artists, but particularly for black artists who haven't been receiving that level of equality to date, to, to, you know, to just be, to be given that freedom, to be given the opportunity to create and on a basic level, get the same budgets, get the same opportunities, playlists, you know, platform support, you know, all these things will help even the playing field. Obviously, in, within buildings and within labels, more people, the more people that work for build buildings who understand all music and not just singular genres, specialists in areas of music and not all at entry level, but at senior levels, people who've got experience, creators who have done great work should be working with people. You know, there needs to be a bit of a wider lens on the people that can help people make music and not just those who have decided they're the best people to do it. You know, they need to be a little bit more openness um, to enable the right creatives to make the music they deserve to make. One of them is purely increasing that visibility of people who have gone, gone through that glass ceiling and who are doing um, amazing things already in the industry so that people know that, you know, it's not just the, 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 the famous uh, black artists who can be their heroes and their role models, um, and, and those people are heroes and role models. But also it can be the behind the scenes people, you know, the accountants and, you know, tour managers and, uh, and lawyers even, um, who, who people can see as, you know, representing them um, within, within the industry. to see a place where there could be accountability around black squares that were being put up in solidarity um, with the events of America, Black Lives Matter and the George Floyd incident. We wanted to address the disparities within the UK music industry with regards to uh, anti-black behavior in the UK music industry, which is something that is quite common amongst creators and executives. We really kind of put together the initial stages of a program that could hopefully affect and change the industry for the better. Power Up is a brand new initiative managed by the PRS Foundation which aims to support black music creators and black industry professionals in the UK music industry. The focus of Power Up is helping these individuals break through barriers, glass ceilings that they faced in their career. Alongside that, Power Up will work with other organisations and individuals to challenge systemic racism in the UK music industry. There's underrepresentation across the whole music sector, especially at senior level. So when it comes to decision making, senior roles or 
um, board roles, there's severe underrepresentation within the music industry. Um, and Power Up, the Power Up movement and the Power Up participant program is going to tackle that. For black music creators and industry professionals, there are many challenges in the UK music industry. These can range from prejudice in work, to anti-black racism, to a lack of opportunity, lack of information, a lack of proper resourcing and funding for their projects and their organisations. When you add in things like gender, sexuality, regionality, and challenges around enterprise, these are the types of challenges that make it hard for black individuals to break through many of the glassians within the UK music industry. So PRS Foundation has a 20 year track record of inclusivity and collaboration. We felt very much after all our deep and honest conversations as a team and as a board, like we had to do a lot more. Um, we're an independent charitable funder, so we're well placed to work as an independent to ensure that there's change across the sector. We work across all genres and across the whole of the UK. So we thought that we'd take the learnings of other inclusivity programs that we've run for years, all the learnings from our focus groups, our executive steering group and from our grantees, um, and apply them to this new change. When I came on board with Power Up, Joe and Ben had done a considerable amount of work getting Power Up to a great position. At that point, they knew what the program was looking like. They knew the point and, and the, the direction of travel in terms of the movement side of things and also had ideas around net, the network. My job essentially was then to speak to as many industry professionals as possible, black industry professionals, to make sure everything we was doing was really reflective of the experience of those individuals we were looking to help, but also was reflective of their wants and you know their perceived needs within the music industry. It's important for Power Up to be led by black individuals for the reason that black people can understand the black experience. Whilst people that aren't black can empathize with some of the situations that black people find themselves in and some of the prejudice that black people face within the music industry, nobody can understand the nuances of that in the same way as somebody that's been through it. That's why it's super important that our executive steering committee is predominantly black. It's why um, the programs will be delivered by black individuals and why the program is specifically targeting black people. The uniqueness of the executive steering committee is everybody's coming from a slightly different angle and a slightly different experiences. You know, it's quite intergenerational, you know, kind of interdisciplinary. So there's people from all different walks of the industry and came in at different places and different times. And some of the discussions that we're having and some of the discussions that are, that are going on and how these are benefiting power up have been absolutely amazing. And I can see it just continually going strength to strength. So we know that power up will only work if it's a collaboration between all sectors of the music industry. Um, we want to collaborate with record labels, with publishers, with managers, with the live sector um, and across every single genre. Um, and we know that in doing so, that's the only way that we can bring about meaningful change long term. So many organisations have come together. This can only work if the music industry engages in this programme. Without the music industry's engagement, this project or, or programme does not work. And the reason being, they have to be bought in to making change. They have to be a part of the solution in order for the solution to work. I'd love to see more major record labels get involved. I'd love to see major publishing companies get involved. Um, and I hope that that happens as we move forward. At the moment, the independent sector is leading the way and they're doing a fantastic job in showing that they want to be a part of the change that they wish to see. Um, as has a lot of the sister orgs and, and, and a lot of the organisations which, you know, keep this industry moving. It's amazing how far Power Ups came in the last like five to six months, you know, while many organisations have been deliberating about what to do and how to kind of deal with some of the challenges ahead of them. Um, the guys at PRS Foundation actually just, just got on. Emotionally, culturally and socially, the whole of the industry is getting behind this positive change. Uh, partners that we're announcing in this first um, launch phase 
include YouTube Music, who are very much involved in offering lots of additional support to our selected participants, as well as Beggars Group, whose CEO Paul Redding swam the English Channel to raise funds for Power Up and to bring in investment and donations from across the industry. Um, we're working very closely with the Black Music Coalition, um, who have done incredible work so far in launching their five key priorities and the Black Music Coalition's manifesto. Um, and we will have a very close alliance with the coalition team and the committee to ensure that the Power Up movement and their work aligns. Um, we're also working really closely with in-kind partners across different trade associations. There is commitment, there is solidarity, but we definitely need to go beyond solidarity now. It's 2021. Uh, the black community is really pushing for proper change. So we would like to see the whole music industry getting behind Power Up, as well as getting behind other initiatives that are like-minded and will be impactful. Um, frankly, we can't do Power Up properly without more support from across the industry. Um, and we want people to put um, all of their commitments into action. And we hope Power Up helps to bring people together to do that. My hope is that in 10 years, something like Power Up doesn't need to exist. That the legacy of what we do now means that the industry is fairer to anybody of any racial background and there's no need for, you know, initiatives that force the agenda, that force people to listen, that force people to change their practice um, and their policies. And, you know, if, if that can be achieved and that can be the legacy of Power Up, that's amazing. Alongside that, you know, it would be great to know that we have powered up over 400 industry professionals in, in say, a decade. And we've created a network that will go on to exist, not just between individuals, but between organisations and individuals and organisations that all have equality at the heart of what they do, have, have music at the heart of what they do. And if Power Up can be a part of that, you know, that's amazing.